It seems everyone who has ever visited the Santa Monica Pier has a story to tell. Having spent over 25 years on the pier, I've certainly heard my share. Some stories resonate more than others, of course. Some are tales of great drama surrounding important events in the pier's history. Some simply transport you to a unique and wonderful era that you wish you had experienced. I'm Jim Harris, Deputy Director of the Santa Monica Pier Corporation, yet perhaps better known as the Pier Historian. I've had the great benefit of hearing the most fascinating stories about our beloved pier, and I'm taking this opportunity to share those stories told in person with you. Have you ever imagined what it would be like to live in one of the apartments above the carousel horses? Yes, there used to be apartments up there. With us today is Paul Sand, one of the people who was lucky enough to call the carousel home. Hi, Paul. Hello, Jim. Hi. Thank, thank you for joining me today. Yes, yes, I, I did. Live, well, it was just for a summer. Well, a mm, little more into winter, but mainly for the summer. But I've lived there all my life. I mean, off and on. Sure. Lived in, around I, the carousel? I could always, yeah. always see the carousel from wherever we lived. Sure. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what, what year was it that you lived above the carousel? Oh, I am no good at years. I'm not being evasive, but okay, I'll take a guess. Mm, early 60s? Early 60s? I, is it, yeah, I, okay. I, think, I think it was. Sure, that's a good era on the pier. Uh -huh. How much was rent? See, I don't remember. <laughs> number, I'm no good at numbers, but it wasn't a lot because it was just, it was the first time I kind of left home and got my own place. Mm -hmm. And uh, all I knew was it, this is extraordinary. And I, I heard about it. I don't even know how I heard about it even. No? You, no. Once, you once told me it had something to do with a woman. W that I was seeing? I think so. Oh, Joan Rose. Joan Rose. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, she was a, a, a girl. A we girl. Were a, we, were, we were a boy and girl. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yes, and uh, I guess, yes, maybe she did find it, but it was very wonderful. And, um, they're, they're round apartments. Well, you know, because your offices are there now. Yes. In our apartments, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, so Actually, we, what? I have a model of the pier right, right in front of me. It's beautiful. Yeah, and um, this is from back in the 1960s, 1970s. So a little bit after you lived there, but certainly the, the, the geography is all the same. I love it. Can you point out where you, you uh, live? Now, where's this street? Where's the, is this the boardwalk? Then uh, the, the boardwalk would go right well, on this side. Well, wait, but I was, with I think, this was Colleen Creed, and I think you were right. Was this your apartment yeah, right Yeah, here? well, she had a round, is something missing? Because she had a round apartment. There is, a, the model is bad, and it does have something missing. But, uh, See, that could drive a person crazy. I know, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I believe uh, you've told me that you lived in this corner I apartment. I did, I did, yeah. and it was, uh, yeah. And the, it was two levels. Yes, the bedroom was upstairs, round bedroom, mm -hmm. beautiful windows. Uh, a round living room, kind of down a ladder, uh, a little kitchen and a bath, all in, and everything was perfection. Wow. And uh, of course there was <coughs> the music, which was very wonderful for the, the first 10 minutes when we first moved in, but then it got kind of... The band loud. organ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be pretty loud. Very loud, yeah, and my, they would wake up a lot earlier than we would. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, but I, I like to pretend that I was magic mm -hmm. and that I could will it to break. And sometimes it would. Sometimes but it would break? It, yeah, it would just break and then stop. And, and you did it. It was. Uh, yeah, it was I, yeah well. that's my, you know, you know, catching on to my personality. Yeah, that, <laughs> you know, I did it. I did it. Mm. How old were you when you lived in the carousel? Uh, I think it was, uh, it was maybe 17, 18. Wow, yeah. that was pretty young to live on your own. Yeah, uh -huh. so uh, it was before I ran away and to Paris, France, and start, started my life, etc. So it was in there some some place. Okay. Uh, you left the carousel for France, and then you and then well, you nothing. I mean, Paris is the only thing that can maybe top the carousel to live in. So it was one of your favorite places to live. It, I'm, what? The carousel was one of your favorite places to live. I'll never forget it. Yeah, yeah no, I think it's wonderful. I, I remember wanting to like do it again when I came back, but it had uh, already been taken over. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
it became a historical society or something. But I met wonderful people there who lived in all four turrets. Wonderful. And who were some of those people? Well, um, <clears throat> well, of course, there was the extraordinary Colleen Creedon, which was everybody's, all at once she was everybody's mother and sweetheart and grandmother and best friend. And she had a great style about her and she had wonderful children and mm -hmm. uh, extraordinary friends. And so she had big parties up there all the time. Not loud parties, but friendly, very interesting people. Uh, some folk stars, Joan Baez, Bob Dylan. Would Here's an invitation to one of her parties right now. Looks like that was an invitation for when they, they were going to save the pier. I th the and she did save the pier. She, she did. You know, with right. your help and, and everybody, but she, was, she saved the pier, didn't she? She was part of it. I think yeah. it, uh, many people were part of that save the yeah. pier. Well, but I'd like to give her all the credit because <laughs> <laughs> she's an old friend. Of course, yeah. Oh, she was a sweet woman. She was. And, uh, and there were a lot of films shot up in that, that area, particularly in her apartment. <coughs> was, was the, um, was Sting, was that shot was up the there? The Sting, yeah, with Robert, Robert, Redford, Redford, uh, uh, Robert Redford. He grew up uh, all around the pier too, you know. Robert Redford? Yeah. yeah. He would uh, hitch rides on the back of the trams just like I did. Sure. You know, it just you, little kids, you know, and playing on the pier, jumping in the water, swimming back, and getting a quarter from somebody watching. Mm -hmm. you know. And and how did I, I know how you know that? But uh, do you recall the story you told me of how you found out that each other grew up around the pier? Uh, y well, I happened to be in a movie. I made a movie uh, uh, that he was a star of. I was the, the co-star, and mm -hmm. uh, it was called The Hot Rock, and we were all jewel thieves in the movie. And, uh, you know, you just sit around a lot when you're making a movie waiting and so you get to, uh, get to know each other. And where were you brought up, you wanted to know, and then it turns out it was the same beach, the same, I don't know about the same time, but we did enjoy all that stuff, you know. It was very wonderful. I wonder if there's any chance that you ever came across each other, perhaps rode the merry-go-round at the same time. It's something. highly possible, yeah. you know. Uh, I, uh, there was a fisherman th that, uh, that w has a, a bait shop sure, on, sure. on the end of the pier. I think you had him on the show. Or yeah, going Josh Velasky. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, he's, a, he's kind of an idol in a way to me because, I mean, I, I always had the same... Mm, personality and temperament that I just wanted to do what I wanted to do and I didn't want to do somebody else's version of life. I just wanted to do my own mm -hmm. and, and that, I was watching that gentleman and he started out, he wanted to work and live on the pier and nothing deterred him. My father from dragging him off and pulling him off with his ear and, <laughs> and yeah, so it's inspiring, you know, I think that's it's those kind of people that make you just hang on to what you want to do the most. And sure. Yeah. Sure. Who are some other characters that lived up above the carousel that you recall? There was, uh, everybody was kind of extraordinary. There was a wonderful uh, couple, Claire and Ed DeLand. Uh, I think they had since gone their own ways. And mm -hmm. But... Um, Claire was a, a good friend of Colleen's. And they, these were all really smart, literate people. I think Claire wrote movie reviews and uh, would read scripts. And there was always some kind of interesting celebrities up there. Um, and then was Ed, her husband, was some kind of genius who worked at Rand Corporation across the street. And he lived in the carousel. He lived in the carousel, and he oh. he designed the human body mathematically. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's all I can say because I don't know what it means either. <laughs> but that he got some kind of a big prize for it. So the place is loaded with very interesting people. And Joan Baez, who was a great friend of Khalid's, yes, uh, would uh, come up there and hang out and rest after her tours and things. I want to know more about that. We're going to take a break right now. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Life Above the Carousel.
Welcome to the Santa Monica Pier. My name is Mary Pat Cooney, and I'm here today to offer you a walking tour of the pier, sharing with you all the stories that I can remember of its 100-year history. There's fishing, there's surfing, there's boats, there's police. It's a slice of American life on the pier. And we're back with Paul Sand. We're talking about living above the carousel and we were talking about uh, uh, celebrity life. Joan Baez, you said, lived above the carousel. She's, uh, she stayed, she was a great pal of oh, uh, Colleen's. She didn't live there. She didn't live there, okay. no, but she would always, I think she was hiding out there. It was sort of her place <laughs> to hide out, because I think it was a kind of wild, wonderful time in her life, and she needed a place to sleep a lot. Okay, and, uh, sure. And Colleen would cook for everybody, and yeah, nice. <laughs> And, uh, and was she a part of the, the pier, or the, um, living above the carousel, was she at a lot of these parties? Uh, I, I think she was kind of always there. She would okay. just sort of wake up and, and, and come wandering in when everybody's having dinner, you know? She was, because I think she was living by night because of her work, okay. like you do when you're working at night <laughs> in the theater or whatever, so. Sure. And uh, yeah, terrific, funny, Really funny, really funny lady. <laughs> <laughs> She's practically a comedian. You know. Really? Yeah. I mean, yeah. her songs are also deadly serious. Sure. And life ain't funny. But she has but a lighter side. She, I mean, that was her main. That was that was really kind of interesting. Just yeah. Mm. Now the parties um, above the carousel or at the carousel. We mentioned the Save the Pier party, but I understand that Colleen threw some for for uh, political other political. Um, purposes like uh, fundraisers for Daniel Ellsberg and for Cesar Chavez. Were you ever at any of those parties? N uh, no, but I did meet Daniel Ellsberg in the ocean. We were by both the pier. Uh, yeah, we were oh. riding waves. Okay. We were surf ride, and I didn't. He looked familiar to me, and there was a helicopter circling over us, and we're catching waves and. And I said, are you who I think you are? And he goes, yeah, and I think I better go home. <laughs> <laughs> so he, and he caught the next wave and went home. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Daniel Ellsberg, of course, famous for the, uh, the Pentagon, the Pentagon papers. papers. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So um, the, I know that you weren't there in 1974 when this happened, but um, the, the carousel was set fire by arsonists, and that, that ended the, the, um, the apartment, the run of the apartments upstairs. They had to evict everyone out because the building had been uh, condemned for, Who did for it? living space. Was there like anyone? Well, I understand that Colleen felt that, uh, that she was targeted for her political activism. So I was wondering what, um, how much political activism really was ex in that atmosphere, because I know you've known Colleen forever. I've known her forever, and there was, it was very reasonable. It's kind of what's really happening. She was very green way before anybody else was, and that's really mm -hmm. all it was, and it wasn't anything dangerous or communist or spooky or anything. It was just, let's take care of things. So she was just... 30 years ahead of everybody else, basically. <laughs> she yeah. designed a solar pier. Yeah, she yeah. did. She drew out a solar pier. Yeah, and yeah. this was, yeah. So. so do you think there's any validity that this would, arson fire would have been uh, I, targeting I, her as an activist? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I, I never picked up like a paranoia thing from her. She was mm -hmm. very, I don't know if she was Midwest or what, but she was really direct and simple and, um, no, she was targeted, you know, and uh, I think Joan was targeted for 
I think Jones said something like, if you want me to pay taxes, you have to come and get it. <laughs> and so she'd give it to them, but she wouldn't put it in an envelope and send it. If they wanted it, they'd have to come and take it away from her, you know. Sure. I think that's, I think that's pretty an accurate story, but. A couple of very strong women. Very strong, strong wonderful, women. and yeah. you know, and it's kind of terrific now because it's, it's all happened now. Sure, you know, they were ahead of their time. Very wonderfully ahead of their time and probably inspirational in their own way, you know. Sure. In their own, yeah. Joan through music and Colleen through her just love of everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. But she had a wonderful tough side that would pop out every once in a while. So she wasn't just a love child at all. She wouldn't take any baloney from anybody, you know, really. <laughs> so I can see some crazy, crazy people in authority, you know, thinking they better set fire to something. Uh, it could, you know, it could have been an accident. I mean, I once saw a cigarette burning on the pier, and, you know, as I was just walking on it one day. And so maybe it was that. I mean, I, you know, I put my Coca-Cola over it and, so, but, uh, so maybe it was an accident, but. Well, regardless, it ended the, the existence of the, the apartments above the carousel. And when the carousel was, of course, when it was um, refurbished, it became city offices. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, no more uh, life above the carousel. No, no. But uh, it was, uh, no. no. Um, now, the carousel is not the only place at the pier that you have actually lived in, correct? Yeah, no, I, uh, at one point, I, I, you know the Shangri-La Hotel? Sure, the Shangri-La. Yeah, well, I've always liked the idea of hotel living, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I was basically by this time working a lot in New York and coming here to do television and things, and so they would set you up where you wanted to be set up, and anyway, so I lived a long time in the Shangri-La, well, to me, six months in the Shangri-La Hotel. Okay. And um, I was there during a big storm, and I was looking out those beautiful windows from the top of the Shangri-La Hotel, and I saw the whole tail end of the pier disappear in into the storm. I actually saw it through the palm trees. So that was another place that you could see the pier from. Did you did you live in the La Monica Ballroom for a period? No. No? I thought that you had for some no. reason. Because there were apartments in that, that space, Where too. Where is that? I don't even know. The ballroom? The old ballroom on the pier. Oh, no, I see, yeah, I see, I know you're right, uh, but it was a roller skating rink right. when I was there. Right. And you did live there. I did live there, did yeah. Live there. I, I sublet an apartment up there from some museum people. So it was a roller, rating, roller skating rink at the time. It was. And, and what was the noise of that as compared to in the merry-go-round? Less? You can imagine. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. a roller rink. Well, actually, there was a lot of music and a lot of announcements, you know, sure. but it was very beautiful. And uh, it was far out on the on the end of the pier, and there were some stormy nights, mm -hmm. rain and wind and high seas, and for some reason, it wasn't scary. No, I don't know. No, it was kind of rocky to sleep, and it was just sort of thrilling. You figure it's been here all this time, you know. And it felt very secure. Uh, yeah. And it's a mysterious and wonderful place. The pier. It is, yeah. you know, it is, and yeah. it's. I think it goes through its phases of nothing happening, and now everything is happening. And we just put a ship. Well, I mean, y quite frankly, you arranged for us to put on our show there, well, sure. and uh, yeah. work like gangbusters, and we want to do it again there. Sure. The show being the, the show being the cabaret. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. I was walking there one night on the pier, and I thought, wouldn't this be a great place for one of those, like an old dark, dangerous, waterfront cabaret show full of songs about murder and broken hearts and envy and all that, that all Bertolt Brecht, a very German. And mm -hmm. and so, so we did, did it, and it was very beautiful. Kurt Weill at the Cuttlefish Hotel. Kurt Weill's Hotel. music, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got a, some wonderful actors and musicians and put on a show. It turned out to be a, a hit. <laughs> well, it's, it's nothing but atmosphere up there, you know. I mean, the show is great, but I mean, the atmosphere is beautiful at all times, when it's mobbed or when it's empty and dark, and when they're repairing it, and it's, <laughs> you can't go there, but you do, and you go here. And 
Yeah, there used to be, uh, as a kid, we would go get breakfast underneath a little, a little egg place underneath. You mm -hmm. what, you're gonna cut away? Uh, no, I'm not going to cut away. There's, a, there's an image on, on the oh. screen right now of uh -huh. the pier. This is after a rainstorm. Beautiful. And, uh, and you can see out to the west end. It's actually one of my favorite photos of the pier. It's very beautiful. But uh, I, I recall you once telling me that, that uh, the pier, when you were growing up, um, was like, like living in a film noir film. It really no, was. Fact. Once I started seeing film noir, you know, mm -hmm. then and, uh, it was. I mean, the uh, perfect shadows and. And this would have been back when, when you were a child, or, or would have been would have been when you were living in the carousel around. That well, time. yeah. What ha we lived in in uh, Silver Lake when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. But every summer, my folks would get a little shack. Okay. On the, one of the alleys that goes down to the beach. I think Cora's Coffee Shop is there now. One of those alleys. Sure. And. Uh, just spend every summer like on the beach. It wasn't fancy or, you know, the, my folks weren't rich or anything, but they worked out that we could have this little apartment, you know, every summer. Mm -hmm. So that was really nice. So there's always, it's my hood. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the, and the pier, of course, wasn't fancy either. Um, back at, at Thank God, yeah. um, perfectly wonderful, uh, very real, like and your fisherman friend, you know. <laughs> very real. Now, you have um, you've spent an awful lot of your your life at the pier, and, and you're you're one of the regulars still today. So you've seen it change immensely from the time that you were a child to to what it's become today. I mean, even in my 25 years on the pier, it's it's like night and day. Mm. And I just wonder what are some of the most significant changes. What what do you remember from a child that that uh, that you wish were still there, and what do you see today that uh, that it continues to be appealing for you? Well, I mean, there's more people everywhere now, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the freeways, the markets, the, the, it's just, it's more, more crowded. And so it's, it, it, which is fine and, and it's great for business and it's great for the people enjoying the pier, but you sort of can't see the pier very well for the people. That's sure. why I like it after hours, you know, or before hours. Sure, early in the mornings. Early in the morning. Beautiful time. You get to pier. see that all the time. I do. Probably, yeah. You should wake up earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Many have tried. <laughs> yeah. But um, but I know what you're talking about. It's a uh, it's a different pier when there's no one on it. Yeah, because you can it. see it. Then. So is that more like what the pier was like when you were a child? Yes. Is that uh, that yes. early morning or late yeah. night feeling? Actually, I'll tell you something. I learned how to walk on the pier. You learned how to walk? As an infant. I can, and I can remember it. I can remember holding on to my mother's hand and my father's hand mm -hmm. and taking those steps. On those rickety old deck boards. <laughs> yeah, which now yeah. hurt my left knee sure. pretty badly. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, I definitely am one of the many pier people, you know. Mm -hmm. Any favorite memories, um, particularly in the carousel? I mean, I, uh, there's, a, there's a story you once told me about how you were, were climbing on, a, on one of the ledges outside to get from room to room. First off, why would you do that? I guess maybe since you were a teenager. But why you wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to go downstairs otherwise and yeah. you know, through another door, blah, blah, blah. So you no, would climb outside a window. You climb outside, outside your window. There was a ledge about this wide mm -hmm. between all the apartments. And if you just wanted to visit people, well, you know, actually we had phones, and so, you know, what are you <laughs> doing? And come on over. And so you just sort of would like hug the wall, and <laughs> it's also exciting, you know sure. what I mean? And then you just, and then there's Colleen cooking stews and things, mm -hmm. and, you know, and people singing, and yeah, right. it was really, really you know, yeah, we never went down on the sidewalk to go into each other's apartments. No, you would climb around on the ledge. Mm -hmm. Were there hallways? The hallways, I think it's, uh, hallways were extraordinary and still are extraordinary because whoever gets to see a merry-go-round from above, sure, really, I mean, a few feet above, not from an airplane, but a few feet above, and you know, so it, and to sit there and to see all the lights flashing by just beneath you, and that's a pretty magic place. And the roof is amazing too. We used to go up onto the roof and 
lean against that amazing gray silver tower, just lie there and look at the stars. You know. Mm -hmm. How would you get on through the roof? There was a door. I think that we got up there. There was, there was a, a door. There was a way to get up there. I don't really know how we did it, but didn't do it very often. Or maybe it was out somebody's window, even you know. But that was pretty amazing. And yeah, very surreal. It is just an extraordinary place to live, wasn't it? Yes. And you, did you even realize it at the time? Yes. You did. Yeah. You knew you were in a special place. Yeah. I you imagine. can't miss it. It's still a very special it, place. It is. Yeah. It, it's amazing. Thank you, Paul. You make me want to live, wish I lived at a, in the carousel. Well, you're there all day long, so you, you got the best of it, really. Please join me next time for Santa Monica Pier Stories. <laughs>